I wanted to put together a quick video regarding the fundamentals of plumb abuse. It seems like a simple process, but like everything else, there are always ways to touch it up and improve the time that it takes to achieve real accuracy. I also wanted to take the opportunity to explain the use of the C-shaped bracket for use on the plumb up string. A quick review of the fundamentals. I always kneel down when operating the plumb up. Rather than leaning over and my legs being unsupported, I've got a nice wide base on the ground. I'll extend the string to about as far as I need it. And uh, both of my elbows are always against my body. So the arm operating the plumb bob is actually resting on my leg. I'm supporting my upper half here with the other hand. And that allows me to just take a nice slow breath and hold a firm line. Versus when your arms just might be out there unsupported, it becomes really difficult. I also use a heavier plumb bob. This is a 24 ounce plumb bob. I find that uh, it stops swaying much faster even though it is a little heavier in the tool belt. I also noticed that when you are having a swaying issue, if I were to kind of recreate that, all you need to do is lower your plumb bob until its tip touches the surface that you're referencing for line, and it'll go ahead and slow itself down. Just give it a couple of taps, and then make sure that when you do acquire your line, your plumb bob isn't actually touching a surface so that it becomes bent and that line is out of plumb. It does need to be hanging free, but you can tap it against that surface just enough to stop the swaying and hold it steady. So there's a quick review of the fundamentals. Um, let's talk about this bracket. Just like most of the other mini prisms, it has uh, two mount settings, the negative 30 and the zero. So those positions are, are clearly notched there if you, if you own one of these. This peanut prism just unscrews from the shield of your existing mini prism and threads right into this bracket. And then when you are uh, attaching the bracket to your plumb bob string, you just use those notches. Typically, they're actually defined with a little piece of text that says negative 30 or zero. You thread the string through the brackets. Again, I'll wrap it around my finger so I have a little bit more control. And that also frees up my thumb. I'll use my thumb to orient the prism so that it's always facing right back to the instrument itself. If I feel like I need a little bit of extra support, again, with my elbow touching my body so my arms are supported, I'll give an extra hand of support here, steadying my fingers, again, using my thumb to make sure that the prism is facing back towards the instrument, and then breathing softly, getting that nice solid reference line. If I needed to extend or lower my rod, I simply slide it along the threads, thread it through the top position again, keep my elbows against my body, I'll actually raise my leg to meet it, give the plumb bob tip a tap so that it stops swaying, breathe softly, and then acquire that line. Remember that when possible, we always want to sight the spot where the point of the prism touches the actual object of reference. Nothing is going to be more accurate than that, so when would we want to use or implement the plumb bob? Well, in instances in which that point itself is obscured for some reason, we would prefer to have a finely reading plumb bob string rather than eyeballing center um, based on our estimation of the rod or trying to use the shield or the center of the prism, which as we know can change with rotation. Thanks for visiting Lean Survey. There are plenty more best practice, quick tricks, and tip videos on the way. Be sure to like, Leave a comment if you have recommendations for content and click that subscribe button for more.